By now you know that the Federal Reserve has pledged to keep interest rates at zero until the middle of 2015 and said it will purchase $40 billion in mortgage-backed securities until the labor market improves. This is on top of the central bank's Operation Twist program, a program that uses proceeds from the maturation of short-term treasury bonds to purchase longer-term dated treasuries. And although the Fed's efforts are geared towards restoring economic growth, there are concerns that it could simply lead to massive inflation. In fact, the Fed noted at its meeting in October that inflation is on the rise. And economists are speculating that the Fed will announce yet another form of easing come the new year once Operation Twist expires. So with all of the stimulus and the question of inflation on the table, is the time right to tiptoe into Treasury Inflation Protected Securities, or TIPS? Here to weigh in is Wilmer Stith, co-manager of Wilmington Trust's short-term corporate bond fund, broad market bond fund, intermediate term bond fund, and short duration government bond fund. Will, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. So what do you say? Is now a good time to invest in tips? I think it is a, somewhat of a good time to invest in tips over regular treasuries, particularly when the Fed is going to do whatever it takes to reflate this economy over the next couple of years. So y yield is one thing, right? But inflation hedge is another. So drilling down on that, what are your expectations for inflation? Uh, you said it is a good time to look at tips relative to treasuries. Um, but in terms of inflation hedge, you know, is this the right time before inflation heads up? Yeah, I don't necessarily think it's going to be a, an effective inflation hedge because, quite frankly, we saw today we got the payroll report out. We saw that earnings were basically unchanged from the previous month up just 1.6 year over year. So, you know, one of the largest determinants of inflation on a sustainable basis is wages, and wage growth is really non-existent. The more important reason, I think, um, tip more of this inflationary expectation that the Fed has set in place because it's trying to do whatever it takes to generate higher bouts of um, inflation. And from that standpoint, we think they're gonna continue with an operation twist once it expires. The very aggressive $40 billion monthly purchase of mortgage banks that you said, both of those measures we think will lend to TIPS outperforming uh, treasuries. So then where in the curve are you looking now? Are you looking at TIPS with shorter duration or longer duration? I would imagine that those that have maturities of, say, maybe 10 years or more would be more susceptible to inflation. You hit it right on the head. The 10-year tip is where we think offers the best value. That break-even uh, rate is, is two and a half. And again, what the break-even measures is the rate at which CPI, urban index, has to be over the life of that investment for you to break even versus a non-tip uh, uh, treasury. And so right now at two and a half uh, break-even, we think that offers potential upside, that you could get to maybe that two and seven eighths type of level in the spring or early summer of next year. That tip break even in the 10 year space is averaged about 2.3, 2.35. So we're a little bit higher than what that average has been since tips have been introduced to the market back in the mid 1990s. Well, what's the risk investing in tips right now? The risk is that uh, inflation uh, doesn't manifest itself. And in fact, we have a deflation. Uh, tips would then uh, underperform, and you would have been much better off in, you know, in longer nominal treasuries, which uh, would definitely benefit in that type of an environment. But you don't expect deflation. We don't expect uh, deflation, certainly. You know, we expect tamed inflation, two percent, maybe two and a half percent, then moving out, you know, two and three quarters in 2014, as these Fed measures take greater, greater effects on our economy. You know, like I mentioned last time, I'm, I'm very encouraged at the fact that the Fed is focused on buying $40 billion a month in mortgage securities, because I think that's definitely going to lend punch to bringing down record low mortgage rates, even lower than where they are now, and will just add to a greater demand for housing, for refinancing. We're seeing already, Jennifer, significant improvements in the refinancing index over time. And so this thesis of the consumer being able to save money, improve its balance sheet by refinancing a 30-year mortgage, taking out a credit card loan, taking out an auto loan, banks making uh, personal loans, all that type of credit extension is taking place maybe a little slower than what a lot of people want, but it's starting to definitely take place. And I think it's going to be even more so as 2013 takes off and we have the elections 
behind us. Will, thanks so much for coming on the program. It's always great to speak with you. I hope to see you soon. Take care. Wilmer Stith, Bond Fund Manager for Wilmington Trust.